Here we go. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Tonight, we're gonna talk about the number four most viewed PragerU video. How's socialism doing in Venezuela? So you just know this is gonna be mwah, juicy like a plump banana. Why are you subscribed to me? But before we begin, I would like to poison the oil well shall we say. This slug is Dennis Prager. Scroll down a little bit on this Mother Jones article. Two of the major contributors to PragerU are Dan and Ferris Wilkes, colloquially known as the Wilkes brothers. They are conservative fracking billionaires. Hydraulic fracking is the process of injecting liquid at high pressure into subterranean rocks to force open existing fissures and extract oil or gas. The Wilkes Brothers funding of PragerU is important to always keep in the back of your mind anyway, but it's especially important for this kind of video because the country of Venezuela has one of, if not the single largest oil reserves in the world. Look at that, it has a whole Wikipedia page. 20% of global reserves as of 2012. <laughs> oh baby. So it's just something for you to keep in the back of your mind while we listen to them talk about Venezuela. And don't worry, the next video is also about Venezuela. Hmm, I wonder what might be going on there. That's enough poisoning of the fracking well. Let's shake things up a bit <laughs> and get into it. How is socialism doing in Venezuela? Tell me. Once there was a South American country with a promising future. It had a functioning democracy, a rapidly developing economy, and a growing middle class. All right, sounds good, doesn't it? I'm immediately casting doubts to functioning democracy. All the important indicators, including education, healthcare, and foreign investment were pointed in the right direction. Okay. It was far from perfect, but the mood was hopeful and with good reason. But now all that promise is gone. So far, this could be referring to literally any country in Latin America. So far, this could be referring to the United States itself. <laughs> the country is a failed state, a hollowed out shell of its former self. You are talking about the United States, right? Uh, close caption, cover this. Debbie D'Souza, political activist and native Venezuelan. Um, hold on now. This name sounds familiar. Oh, look at that. She's the wife of Dinesh D'Souza. Leftist socialist movement destroyed my birth country of Venezuela. Through the Dems, they want to do it in America. All right, that makes sense. Oh, and look, here they are with Trump. Here they are with a loser. All right, <laughs> no. If you don't know Dinesh D'Souza, well, good, good. Good. No, just that's just an abject good. Dinesh D'Souza is a, a filmmaker. D'Souza's films and commentary have generated considerable controversy due to their promotion of conspiracy theories and falsehoods. And there are six sources for this claim. So already all that, all of that being crammed into this, I think that's enough to count some reasonable doubt on the honesty and integrity of the actors involved here. Myself excluded. I am never wrong. Services like power and water are sporadic. <laughs> My, it's like that where I live. <laughs> the most basic consumer goods from bread to toilet paper are in chronically short supply. It's also like that where I live. Hey! What year did this come out? 2017, well before Corona. Why do they always like to talk about bread lines and toilet paper? There's a lot of other consumer goods out there. What do you want to bet that they're not really going to explain how socialism ties into this? Ha! We'd be lucky to even get a consistent definition of socialism by the end of this video. If we get a consistent definition of socialism, I'll eat the rest of my toilet paper. How's that for you? That'll solve the supply chain's problems. Crime has skyrocketed. I like that there's a jet plane going there. Freedom of the press is almost non-existent. Democracy has been replaced by a virtual dictatorship. Yo, this really could be describing Trump and Trump's America. The country is, I'm sorry to say, my beloved Venezuela. Ah, there it is. in which my family has deep roots. Do you think they're gonna mention once in this video the US led embargo on the country of Venezuela? I honestly don't remember if it does. Let me just, one of the first things here is from uh, Bloomberg. So that's interesting. Calling that early sanctions did not target the Venezuelan economy in any way. Hmm. I'll put that as a, a slight doubt. Adding that sanctions opposed in 2019 could worsen the situation, but that the crisis precedes them. Crisis does precede it, but we'll get to that in a little bit. You just know they deliberately poached her for this video. I can tell you what happened to it 
in one word. Socialism. I have a feeling she's not. In 1999... Nope, that's more than one word. In 1999, then-candidate for president, Hugo Chavez, promised to lead okay. the people of Venezuela to a socialist paradise. Okay, fine. Let's... Let's accept this framing. His theme was Esperanza y Cambio, hope and change. Venezuela is a nation of great wealth, Chavez said, but it's being stolen from its citizens by the evil capitalists and evil corporations. Fucking true. This wrong would be righted, he assured the voters, if they elected him. And they did. Good. To their everlasting regret. Oh, Chavez drew white. inspiration from his mentor, Fidel Castro, like his mentor, he enjoyed giving speeches that sometimes lasted as many as seven hours. What the hell does this have to do with socialism? Is that socialism? Giving a speech for seven hours? I've done streams bumping up to that. Does that make me socialist? You know, Rush Limbaugh does that too, you know? He even gave himself his own weekly <sighs> television show where he would spontaneously break into song. Rush Limbaugh made an album. I don't know if you guys knew that. It was featured in the documentary known as Pinky and the Brain. Behold, I hold in my hands the only remaining evidence of radio host Rush Limbaugh's failed singing career in the 1970s. Hey, he predated, he predated, he predated Hugo Chavez. So the framing of this makes it seem like they really just regret that Chavez would go on stage and speak for like seven hours. <laughs> Debbie D'Souza wrote this herself. He enjoyed giving speeches that sometimes lasted as many as seven hours. So I thought we were talking about Venezuela. Why are we talking about Cuba? Why are you bringing up Castro? This is not relevant. My pinky in the brain bit isn't relevant either, but I'm making a point here. I'm making a point about the irrelevancy of PragerU's video itself. Huh? See? 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 It's, it's art, man. Here's a rule. When your nation's leader starts singing on national television, you're in trouble. I think that's a pretty dumb metric. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's stupid. Didn't Trump sing? Oh my God. You type in Trump sings and everything is just parodies. Under Chavez, the government of Venezuela took over industry after industry. The government, he assured everyone, would run these businesses better than private enterprise. What, he just stepped in and started singing as he took them over? Well, depending on what the business is, maybe. Let's see. List of countries by government spending as percentage of GDP. Oh, look at that. Venezuela is actually smaller than the United States by about 0.4. <laughs> What's the lowest? They say they love small government, but what are the actual lowest ones? Democratic Republic of the Congo, Yemen, Guatemala, Nigeria, Chad. Okay. I wonder why Dennis Prager doesn't move to one of those countries. And the profits would be shared by the people. Hell with yeah. great fanfare, he tore up contracts with multinational oil and gas companies. Hell yeah. And demanded that they pay much higher royalties. When they- Beep boop. Base department. When they refused, he told them to leave. They did. Okay, this happens all the time. His image was burnished by Hollywood celebrities who flocked to see the oh, great shit. work he was doing. Oh shit. I actually don't recognize. Hen Belafonte Glover? That's not Donald Glover. Danny Glover? Taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. Okay. Progressive politicians from the US Whoa, and wait, Europe you, wait. also praised him. Do you not lavishly. explain it? Here's another rule. When Hollywood celebrities visit your country to praise your leader, you're in trouble. When the leader sings on national television and is praised by Hollywood celebrities, you're doomed. What? Socialism always works in the what? beginning. What? So people are fooled in the beginning. Wait, I, oh, 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 I'm so off track. This is an incoherent. You set up the premise of Hollywood celebrities going to Venezuela to praise it. You don't explain how these Hollywood celebrities are praising Venezuela, but that's your premise. And then your conclusion is that socialism fails? How the f- These two, these two things don't logically follow. This is the kind of argument I would expect from a D'Souza. I can see why Dinesh D'Souza married this, this woman. This PragerU video is stupider than the others. You know, you could just say like, yeah, I don't like the government of Venezuela. I don't like Hugo Chavez. I think he's a dictator. He's been cracking down on the press and freedom of speech, and I don't like that. And then it's like, that's it. 
nobody has an argument against that. It's that easy. I'm here making that argument right now. You're not going to hear me defend Hugo Chavez or Nicolas Maduro. Because that's what's great about me. I hate everyone. I don't feel the need to defend anyone. These are such easy arguments to make. I don't understand what this is supposed to... Pen Glover Belafonte? I don't recognize Pen. That don't look like Pen Gillette. What, is it Sean Pen? I'm being hyperbolic and I'm hamming it up a bit. This kind of shows how intellectually bankrupt Prager U is. This isn't a good argument in any way, but what this is, is it's, well, virtue signaling to their conservative audience. Yeah, those fucking commies in Hollywood. <laughs> It's really not hard to find celebrities or individual members of like any group of people that would that we might be like, oh yeah, you know, I actually like Saudi Arabia. I really like their policy of supporting domestic terrorists in their proxy wars with Yemen. That's something that I, ooh, it hits me in my heart and I like it. Progressive uh -huh. politicians from the US and Europe also praised him lavishly. Uh -huh. Here's another rule, when ha Hey, there's no example when you say progressive politicians praised him lavishly. You don't have an example there? You just have those three actors? Okay. You know, I'm pretty sure Dennis Prager probably does more cocaine than they do. When the leader sings on national television and is praised by Hollywood celebrities, you're doomed. <laughs> you see, socialism is when Hollywood celebrities come to your country. Can you imagine? Maybe those Hollywood celebrities like Belafonte here on the right. He might start singing with Hugo Chavez and then Satan himself will come through the earth. What happens next? Socialism always works in the beginning. So people are fooled in the beginning. We can clip that for her saying socialism always works. <laughs> socialism always works so people are fooled in the beginning. People were fooled, but then he came on TV and started singing Daisy Bell. And it was all downhill from there. Then he let the poor again. Easy for governments to confiscate money, but eventually there's no more money to confiscate. Wait, you didn't say anything about confiscating money. You said he was nationalizing businesses. That's a little different. Confiscating money. Isn't the money technically the property of the government anyway? It's a rebranding of the Margaret Thatcher quote. You know, the truth is capitalism works great on paper. But eventually, people have enough and start cutting heads off. If you're lucky. If you're not so lucky, they'll eat you. Just just take a, take a big bite <laughs> into your ham bone. <laughs> I don't know why I'm on a cannibalism kick lately. In the case of Venezuela, I mean that literally. People uh -huh. who could get money out of the country did. <clears throat> oh, wait. I wonder if that might have something to do with the financial crisis you're trying to describe here. <laughs> Hey! Many left the country altogether. Nearly two million, according to Venezuelan sociologist Tomas Baez. Wonder if that also might have had something to do with the economic crisis in Venezuela. Make no mistake, you didn't hear me defend the government of Venezuela. Did not hear me defend Chavez or Maduro. Just pointed something out. The wealth creators continue to create wealth. Ah! Uh, no! 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 That's not how wealth is created. Wealth creators continue to create wealth. Wealth is created by labor. I'm sorry. This is just this is just this is just wrong. They created it somewhere else, Miami or Madrid and other places around the world. They used the money they had and got out and took the money with them and you literally showed bags of money leaving the country. People who could get money what? out of the country did bags of money literally flying out of Venezuela. Huh, wealth creators, what, you, it's leaving the country. Get your shit together, Debbie. Or a more likely explanation, they took the money they were able to get with them, they left the country, and then they just set up shop somewhere else using the money they took with them. Meanwhile, the Venezuelan government was a little too incompetent, understating it there, to get the economy back up and running again like it was, with such a massive outflex. Hey, easy. I can't help but notice here. We are three minutes into the video. Over 50%. Look at that. We're over the halfway mark. We have not been given a single definition of socialism here. Normally when it gets to this stuff, I'd say like, you're not giving a description of socialism. You're not giving a condemnation of socialism. I would say you're giving 
a, a criticism of the policies of Venezuela. You're giving a criticism of the policies of Hugo Chavez. But Debbie D'Souza here isn't even doing that. We're just getting weird bromides about Hollywood and him seeing it on TV. She talked about him nationalizing the oil industry. And then what? You just kind of dropped it. You didn't go anywhere with that. Holy shit, I could do a better argument than that. Look, here's a better argument. A Chavez nationalized the oil and gas industries and he kicked the multinational corporations out. Okay, now other countries don't want to do business with Venezuela. Now there's a lot less money coming in. That hurts the Venezuelan economy, which is very centered on oil. And they haven't done much to diversify their portfolio. Now the economy's in the shitter. Congratulations, Chavez. You fucked everyone over with that. I did a... Look, I did it. I did, that is a better argument than Debbie D'Souza has made. My God, where are we going next? Miami or Madrid and other places around the world. When Chavez first ran for president in 1999, he said he would leave in two years if people weren't happy with him. Didn't he like win in like landslides? <laughs> Look at this first thing here. Hugo Chavez is still Venezuela's most popular president, says new poll. A staggering 79% of respondents identified Chavez as Venezuela's most liked president. Venezuelan analysis.com i don't know if we can trust this poll but hey it's a start but like castro chavez never had any intention of giving <clears throat> up power I he mean, died in i mean is 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 a politician what do you expect he died in office in 2013 replaced by his vice president nicolas maduro yeah. maduro is chavez without the charisma or the voice oh the country is now a pariah oh that's it we're not going to get more of an explanation on maduro just, just, ah, oh, he lacks charisma. Low energy Maduro. So sad. <coughs> He's very much the Jeb Bush of Venezuela. <laughs> the country is now a pariah, shunned by uh, the world and isolated. It's so bad uh, that I wonder many international airlines refuse to fly there. I wonder if that might have something to do with the U.S. led international embargo against Venezuela. You know, again, not to defend the government of Venezuela or nothing. When when you say you support free trade, like embargoes like this are not are not free trade. This is not the free market, even by your own definition, which Prager you ostensibly claims to support. People stand in lines for hours just to get food. Shit, man. People are doing that in my city, in the United States, right now. It's not the fault of socialism or capitalism. Well, I would say it is the fault of capitalism, but it's the fault of a messed up supply chain. This has been big in the news right now. This is not my state though. Thousands of cars form lines to collect food in Texas. Oh boy. Oh yeah. So yeah. Long lines. I don't care, Wolf. Long lines at food banks across the U.S. No, this is Texas, San Antonio. Yo, what happened there, guys? Are you gonna blame the Democrats on that, too? I bet Debbie D'Souza would, actually. <laughs> we hit a crisis just like Venezuela did. Now, it's a different kind of crisis, but our government has kind of flubbed the response to it. Understatement of the century so far. I can't wait for the next major crisis to pop up that these people habitually fail to address. Thousands of people waiting in line for food. You know, while that sounds bad, if all of them are still getting food, that's good. It could be much worse. There could be no food at all. Sometimes they walk <sighs> away empty handed. A recent survey hey, found yeah. that 75% yeah. of Venezuelan adults lost weight in 2016. Hey. The color on this chart here, it's the same color of Glutino brand gluten-free cookies. It's kind of funky with the green screen. Glutino, I am so, so sorry you had to be in this video. You are leagues better in quality above anything PragerU has ever made. Please, by all means, subscribe to my channel so I can get an actual gluten-free sponsorship. That is the life goal. That would be amazing. I suspect they never will. You never know. Average of 19 pounds. This national weight loss program is known cynically as the Maduro diet. That is funny. 
I like it. But I wonder if Venezuela might have trouble importing food, you know, because of the embargo. I wonder if that might be a thing. I don't know, man. Still, Maduro holds on to power. Opposition leaders and journalists who report the truth are jailed. Venezuela is a cautionary yep. tale. Yeah, okay. Donald Trump? Donald, the media is the enemy of the people? Trump? Donald, the lying fake news media? Trump? Can't help but notice. Prager you doesn't seem to care about that. Like, you say socialism's so bad for these reasons, and it's gonna happen here. And Donald Trump trying to do one of these things that you're saying is so bad in Venezuela, and I can't help but notice, you don't seem to fucking care. In fact, looks like you're buddies with him. Looks like you're good friends. All three of you are thrilled to see each other. Trump, who's also mentioned he should have a third term. Trump, who's also refused to accept that he's lost the election, even though Hugo Chavez was most likely significantly more popular than Trump ever has been. Trump, who's praised dictators like Xi Jinping, and who said, yeah, you're president for life. Maybe we'll do something like that in America. No, Debbie, no, Dinesh. You two don't seem to have a problem with any of this. Can't help but notice. Can't help but notice. You kind of like it when your side does that. Funny that. Yeah. Venezuela is a cautionary tale. Once a country goes down a socialist path, there's no easy way back. Again, we have failed to have a single definition of the word socialism. What? 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 There's none of it. Holy shit. This is embarrassing. Embarrassingly bad. They call themselves Prager U, but like if you wrote if you wrote any essay like this, you'd get an F. You need to have a, an actual definition if you're going to keep going back to a claim like this. And the longer a country stays socialist, the harder it is to reform it. Venezuela has been socialist okay. for two decades. Okay. If you don't think, how? How is it harder? How is there no easy way back? You don't give an explanation. <laughs> we are just, oh, bippin' and boppin', hoppin' and poppin' today, baby. Uh -huh. If you don't think it can happen here, whether here is the United States or Europe or anywhere else, you're fooling yourself. This is disgusting. The phrase, it can happen here, is a warning tale of fascism. And like I've been saying, uh, no definition of what socialism is. So how do I avoid it? What actions can I take to avoid it if it's so horrible? I don't know because you haven't given me a definition, Debbie. What, do you want me to go shoot Sean Penn? I'm sorry to tell you, I ain't gonna do that. Is it socialist when we have bread lines? I know she says that Venezuela is socialist and they have bread lines, but like, is the act of giving food to people is that socialist in itself? So it's socialist if there's no food. But if we're giving food to people, that's socialist too, right? That, that That's how it works, right? Let's carry on. When people get used to depending on the government, yeah, no okay. matter how poor they remain, that dependency is hard to break. Yeah, so it is. <laughs> God, bootstraps argument. This is such a quintessential PragerU conservative video. Bad arguments, socialism, but no definition of socialism. Just trust us, socialism bad. Vuvuzuela! Bread lines. Hollywood celebrities. Dependency on government. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's it, everyone. That's all you need to do. Shit, I could do a Prager U video. From all the examples that were given in this video talking about Venezuela, Debbie D'Souza never really tied dependency on the government to any of them. Was that like left over from an earlier draft of something? That's why you should never buy the socialist lie. You don't need to buy it, comrade. In this society, we have abolished wealth and money. It is yours. It is ours. Socialism is a drug. Pretty sure they said that about religion, Doug. And like a drug, it feels great at first, but eventually it will ruin your country. How? You haven't even explained 
how Venezuela took a downturn. You didn't talk about the financial crash. You didn't talk about the crisis going on at all. You didn't talk about the Venezuelan response to the mass protests going on. I can make a better argument than this corporate oil stooge can. Just like it ruined Venezuela. Uh-huh. I'm Debbie D'Souza for Prager yep. University. Fucking sell out! Thank you for watching this video. As a nonprofit, PragerU relies on donations from viewers like you. And big oil! <laughs> so is this video just trying to fan the flames of war and to get U.S. intervention in Venezuela so the Wokes brothers can move in and make more money? Like... I'm... Yeah, right? And this has 12.6 million views. People actually watch this and think it's good. Venezuela is falling apart. Its economy? Ruined. Its people? Hungry. Its government? Corrupt. What happened? In a word, socialism. Debbie D'Souza, a native Venezuelan and political activist, explains. She didn't explain, though. I came here wanting an actual argument about socialism in Venezuela. I didn't even get that. The only people who think socialism works is the people who have never lived under socialism. Okay. But this is not socialism. This hasn't been tried yet. This will work this time. These people and people like and PragerU, conservative outlets, they benefit from not actually giving a consistent definition of socialism. That way they can say anything that improves society or anything that cuts into our profits. That's socialism. As a Venezuelan born and raised in Caracas, I can certify this video is very accurate and easy to understand. Is that true? Oh, look, this person's posting stuff in, well, uh, that's not Spanish. I don't know. Does Venezuela have weeaboos? I'm sorry to tell y'all, but you know, nationalizing the oil industries, that's not socialism. That's just nationalization. That's why we have a word for that. <laughs> socialism is not when the government does stuff. Oh yeah, those evil socialist firefighters. Is that why fire trucks are red? I've had it. I've had it. That's enough. That's enough of this one. It's red. Thanks to all of my October patrons. We are nailing all of this prager you stuff. Thank you, Critch, Dios, Elsie Hup, George, Jai Palamo, Mellow Cheddar, and Willie Wings. Is it socialism to say the names of all of my patron backers equally? That might actually be socialism. I don't know because Debbie D'Souza didn't tell me.